Hello, everyone. Yeah. So let's start. Today we will tell you about S a bit about SAP security and how we got yet another remote command execution on SAP server. And first of all, I should say a little bit about me. I said my name is Dmitry and I'm a security researcher in ERP scan company. In ERP scan company, I'm responsible for security assessment, penetration test, and all research things related with different ERP system like SAP or Oracle business suite, but especially with SAP. Yeah. Hello. Uh, my name is Dmitry. I am a research engineer in company ERP scan, and I am security researcher. Yes. And a bit about our company. It is a security company with headquarters in Netherlands. Also, we have offices around the world in US, mm -hmm. Denmark, Australia. So we do a lot of research related with ERP systems. So and give a different talks on this about these topics. So I, ha I have no slides uh, with agenda, uh, but I will try to explain what I want to present. This talk is not about how important spend money and time on SAP security. I hope you know how it's important. Uh, I will not be speak about best practices and how to set correct rights for SAP users. This talk is just a little story about how we got yet another remote command execution on SAP server. And usually I start my talk with a slide about SAP. And so what is SAP? SAP is the most popular business application in the world. A lot of well-known companies like Nike, Apple, Intel, McDonald's, and etc. used ERP system for their uh, works. Uh, and the question is why the ERP system is an interesting target for an attackers. That's because a lot of critical business information stored inside the SAP system. And if attacker will get access to this, uh, to the SAP system of the company, probably he will get a lot of private information about the company. So that's why we try to compromise the SAP. And what do we want? Uh, we want to a critical vulnerability in SAP system for our penetration test, for our security assessment, which can allow us to easily get access to the critical business data. We can try to attack the SAP system through the different ways. For example, through the web part of SAP, using typical web issues like uh, cross-site scripting, CCRF, SQL injection, whatever. Or we can use uh, specific vulnerabilities in ABAP and Java stack of SAP try to attack through the issues in Java servlets, uh, transactions, uh, or mistakes in ABAP code. Or we can use uh, vulnerabilities in additional, uh, additional services of SAP, like a log viewer, development management, or even SAP created their own notepad. But we decide to look at the binary level of SAP, and we, we decide to look at the SAP core and we decide to start with probably most important binary service of SAP, SAP Dispatcher, and look at this plus work binary file. Binary file this plus work has a considerable size around 51 megabytes. It's a pretty big, and of course, as a reverse engineers, we open this binary file using our favorite uh, disassembler. In our case, it was uh, IDA Pro. It's a very popular debugger and disassembler. And as a result, we got a lot of assembler codes. IDIDB has size around 133 megabytes. It's also pretty big for analyzing. And of course, we tried to debug this process. But on this step, we got first problem. It was very difficult to debug network communication of this plus work process. Why? Uh, because on the server side, uh, works not only one disk plus work process, uh, a lot of child process also exist on, uh, exist on, and all these childs can handle the user requests. It means we need to guess what child responsible for different requests or we try to shoot to attach our debugger to every child process. 
that's how this situation looks uh, like lo looks on the server side. You can see a process SAP start create a lot of child of this plus work process. Uh, and also you can see a lot of uh, different process like a GWRD, uh, it's gateway, ICMN, it's an internet communication manager, GSTART, it's process responsible for the Java stack of SAP and etc. So we need to decrease the count of this plus work process. Yeah. For solving this problem uh, of the count of this plus work, uh, we are decided to reduce the count of this uh, plus work. For that, we changed some SAP profile parameters uh, related with dispatcher. On this slide, you can see the, the, the values of these parameters, what we use on our test system. But most important parameter is, you can see on this, <coughs> sorry, on the slide, it's responsible for the count of work process. In our case, we set it equals zero. And as a result, we will get picture like that. Only one, this plus work process. So we can now easily attach it to it uh, our, using our debugger. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what we need. But if you look closely on the process list, you will see one thing. We lose a GSTAR process. This is how process list look looked before we implement our profile parameters, everything is okay, GSTAR works fine. That's how process list look, looks after implementing our profile parameters, we lose our GSTAR profile. Oh, sorry, GSTAR process. But uh, we don't care because our goal is this plus work, so we don't care about GSTAR. Go next. At the end of our research, we want to find vulnerabilities, I said, which allow us to get access to the SAP server. And yes, we want to find a remote command execution on the server side as the final goal. So we have spent some time for reverse engineering of this plus work, but we didn't find nothing interesting for us, which can help us to get remote command execution on the server side. Binary file is too big. We are too lazy for analyzing of every functions, probably for fighting issues, which allow us to trigger uh, some memory corruptions. Uh, vulnerabilities can take too much time for us, but maybe not. So we decide to change the, our victim. Uh, and we decide to choose another binary, not so big, which allow us uh, to do a quick analyzing and uh, which allows us to find something very quick. We look at the process list uh, one more time, and as you know, on the server side works a lot of different process. As I said, GWRD, for, for, it's a gateway, ICMN, etc. But we decide uh, to choose another one. We choose SAP Starter SRV binary file. SAP Starter SRV is a part of well-known SAP service which called SAP Management Console. This service allowed to SAP administrators uh, control SAP systems through the HTTP protocol using different SOAP methods. For example, administrator can start or stop SAP system, read log files, change SAP profiles, uh, get process list, etc. A lot of uh, SOAP methods. In modern version of management console, almost all this SOAP method required notification. Administrator should provide operating system level, username and password for the actions. By the way, as I said, uh, this area well known for the security researchers who works with SAP. That's why even in Metasploit framework, you can find a lot of uh, models which allow you to use the SOAP method for different tags. But I said, you need uh, username and password for that. So, by the way, we, we choose SAP Starter SRV because uh, it's, the binary file size is around uh, uh, 50 megabytes. Uh, it's listen HTTP port 500013, which can be accessible for the browser, for example. Uh, 
and also said SAP management console has a lot of interesting sort of methods and one of them is OS execute method which allow us to execute operating system level commands. But we need, uh, but we should solve one problem. We should bypass notification. So let's try to do it. If you look in the, in disassembler and try to understand how notification works, uh, SAP start get HTTP request, extract uh, from the user, extract username and password, and check this username and password. Because it should be operating system level, uh, user and password, uh, service check it using uh, information from operating system. But we found one interesting thing. During the understanding how notification works, we found a function with interesting name, is trusted internal connect. Uh, which called during the notification checks. So it looks like uh, on looks like exist internal services which also require notification on SAP management console service. Maybe and we think maybe for that function SAP use another type of notification, not operating system level notification. And yes, inside this function we found hardcore usernames. This uh, usernames looks pretty interesting and not look like a normal usernames. What important, it's not a operating system level usernames. That means it's trusted internal connect, cannot, can't notificate, notificates on SAP management console without having operating system level user. And if we back to this user and try to Google it, we can find information about the first one. It's documented username which can be used for the getting temporary login tickets or something like that. But we didn't find any information about that another one, the second one. What is that backdoor or something other, doesn't matter. We found the username. Okay, great. We need uh, understand what the password for that user is used. Maybe password also hardcoded but of course no, uh, in this case it will be really easy. So the, the, the next goal is understand how the pass, what, what the password used for those users. And on this step, I, I want to get work to my colleague Dmitry. Hello, so uh, Let's try to understand what we can get password for these uh, hard-coded users. And we found a few interesting functions inside is Trust Internal Connect. Uh, how we see this function is called JSF Open SHM, JSF Check SHM Case String, and JSF Close SHM. Um, uh, all these functions come with part, what called SHM. And uh, what is SHM? Uh, SHM, it, uh, it means shared memory. Uh, it's memory with a lot or more processes, uh, shared data between. And uh, for example, one process can write something in this memory and another process, if it, uh, if it has some uh, writes, can read, from the, can read this data in shared memory. Uh, okay, back to our functions. Try to understand what exactly we do. Uh, first, JSF open SHM. Looks like this function is just open SHM. Uh, this like like function close SHM. And what is it? It looks like check some key. This is pretty interesting. So now we should answer on few questions. What is it key? Yeah, and if is this key static, uh, can we guess this key if not static? And if it's not static, can we brute this key? Um, yes, this checking key is password for notification on substat uh, SRV. Is this key static? No. Is key not static? Uh, the key uh, generated randomly and has len equal 36 bytes. And so we can guess this key. 
and uh, we can brute force it because it's very long. Oh, so looks like this function is pretty secure, and we cannot get password for hardcoded usernames. Uh, but we don't give up. Uh, in this slide, you can see our model. Sub start SV read read some password from SHM memory. And if we try to debug a link for for debug, we write some small Python script which try to execute os execute method using hard code username and a random key. In, in our case, we said password blah blah blah. Sorry for bad image. Uh, after that, we attach to substart SV using our debugger, GDB, and try to understand what a key is expected by sub SRV. So demo time. Okay. We attaching to sub SRV in our server. Attach. And uh, now we set breakpoints in function JSF check SHMK string. <laughs> now on my machine uh, we run our script and uh, continue. Okay, one breakpoint is on. Uh, we set breakpoint and main. Simply what found what what key we can find in the essential memory. And uh, looks and arcs of this function. So it's our key, what came from our script. And Okay, it's script, it's k, what we found as SHM. As you can see, random, random SHK string is XAAX. It's uh, very good for us because probably it is some situation when uh, random k is not so random. And why? And so we have way to execute command on OS level on a subsystem. Uh, we have username, and probably we have password for this hard-coded name. So our next goal is understand why is is k x a x. Let's call it k magic k. Uh, for what we should understand more deeply what. Uh, how this function works. And this slide we see how the function works. It's read, read rough binary key from shared memory. After that, do conversion uh, for printable format, ASCII. And after that, it check key with user input, and if we, everything is okay, it returns positive result. Back to, back to our key while we why it's equal to x a x. The answer it's pretty sim simple. Just because shared memory has zero values, uh, looks like some process didn't write raw key while in, in SHM. And uh, is what and why substart SRV convert convert with zero values to x a x. So <clears throat> it read uh, so it read the raw key from SHM memory. In all cases, in all case, all bytes of raw key are zero values and convert this key to x a a x. Uh, it means some shared memory problem secured. We spend some more time to understand what is happening. What is process that should put rough key in shared memory 
and uh, we should find this responsible for it. What process write this in, uh, intelizite, generate, and write this uh, gay in shared memory. But do you remember we change profile profile file on our SAP server? Gstat what never started. And we decide to change back all our para profile parameters back. So we can comment all these parameters and restart system. What we got after restart? After that, gstart uh, started and random SHMK string indeed random. And, and postart uh, x, uh, x not working more. It looks like what JSTAT responsible for generate and set of k in memory. As you can see in this slide. Uh, so it's mean uh, whether we can execute command on server side via SOAP request if we can authenticate using hard coded password and our magic password. Hard coded username and our magic password XAX. But for what we should change some parameters in SAP system? Or we can try to do another way, for example. What if we all we need is just stop the start process? Uh, for checking this idea, we wrote another Python script which trying to cycle execute command on server side using SOAP method or execute, use it hard coded username and our magic key for notification. And afterward, we try to kill JSTAT process, now only local. For this, our idea. And so we log on our sub SAP service and execute kill command. And if, and if everything right, our script, which try to execute, execute command via SOP request, can do it. Because password for hard-coded username set to our magic key, XAX, but Nothing. Okay. Uh, we didn't give up. So what if not only JSTAR responsible for putting RFK in value in shared memory? Uh, we think what processes can also responsible for do it, for utilizing, utilizing and writing with K in shared memory? Maybe it's IC man, Internet Communication Manager. In this case, since JSTAT and IC man is responsible for any random graph K in the SHM memory. Uh, and why we decide to choose the IC man processes? Uh, uh, seriously, it's just our intuition. Uh, what if we kill JSTAT and IC man? Uh, so, new plan is run our script which try to execute SOAP request using our hard-coded username and magic key. And we will try to kill ICM and JSTAT processes locally using kill all command. Okay, demo time to... Okay. We connect to our stand via SSH. <laughs> and bottom, we run netcat on my local machine. And on our local machine, we uh, run our script or try to authenticate on this service using hardcoded name and our magic key. Um, 
as you can see, zero respond on authorized. Uh, we skip working in cycle. And now we are trying to kill all processes, IC man and JSTAT. Okay, we get shell. I think it's great, really. Uh, but for remote attack, we should kill JSTAT AIC man remotely. Uh, for what we should find doses for JSTAT and those for IC man. And we start with JSTAT. JSTAT process responsible responsible for Java stack on of SIP. And we find and yes, we found those and just that after three days of research, uh, possible race condition. As a result, attacker can send few special requests on JSTAT port, port what, which will trigger a bug and JSTAT process uh, will be stopped. Uh, what interesting, uh, JSTAT process restart after the crash. Uh, so the start was easy target. In this slide, you can see multiple requests and uh, uh, GDB session. Uh, now we need only one more step for triggering the RCA remote command execution remotely, and we try to find those bug in ICM. Yeah. Okay, what is ICM? ICM uh, is Internet Communication Manager, one of the core components of SAP system, which is responsible for many things, for most of things uh, available via HTTP. Uh, so we need those back in this service. Uh, on the slide, you can see some informa information about this binary. Uh, it has size almost six megabytes, and because it's one of core component of SAP, it's heavily audited. And so we try to find some bugs in public, and what we found, and CV details was those found in 214. And we are on Knoll Vectors. Uh, looks like it will be not so easy for us. And yes, after 30, 30, 35 days, plus some weekends, we found issue with each allow us to trigger those attack. On the slide, you can see the part of request which allow attacker crash with service. And again, what interesting process I see, man, restart after the crash. Some problems. Uh, first, all the bugs are race conditioned. And what interesting, if we kill just start before ICM, we don't get remote code execution. Uh, and Second problem, small gap for magic key between JSTAT and ICM start. Okay, final demo. Okay, again, we run that cut. We run program what triggered those back in ICM. And for JSTAT. After that, uh, we run script, our Python script, what try to notificate on server with hardcoded username, our magic key and try to execute 
SOAP auth execute method with uh, our Rails connect by shell, what we wrote in Perl. Okay. I write. So and we write. White, 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 white. Okay. We get remote shell on our SAP system. I think it's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we get remote access to our SAP, SAP system. Um, what we can do with this SAP instance? Yes, we can grab some information from it. We interested in several accounts. We need SAP administrator, notification data, and uh, SAP database administrator. For that, we download something what called uh, Mm, SAP security storage. It consists of two files, SAP properties and SAP key. If we have these two files, we can decrypt these files and get credentials from SAP system. So. Uh, we knew part where these files exist, and uh, we run locally uh, HTTP server on this in this route. And download these files. As I say, sec stored k and sec store properties. It's all files what we need. After that, we move all this file in our folder called loot. And uh, for decrypt this stuff, we use program what called sec store decryptor. It's our program. And as you can see, we get all credential what we need. So it's program called uh, SAP GUI. It's program used by administrators and clients uh, for work with SAP instance. And uh, now we build new config to connect to our SAP system. At the end, we get admin rights on all SAP system. Substar it's common admin login and SAP systems. And we insert password. That it's all. I get admin access to all SAP system. I think it's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. <laughs> okay. Um, in this slide, you can see sub nodes, which close this, uh, this box. And conclusions. What I can say? First, don't give up. And try to build. Uh, first, don't give up. And you can't exploit uh, bugs. If you can't exploit bug using one issue, try to find, to try to find another to trigger it. Uh, for SAP administrators, 
even not so critical issues like DOS at not exploitable and first look hard-coded credential can be very dangerous, but in our case, it's not hard-coded. Uh, because in modern world, attackers can build attacks from change, change, chain of different small issues. And what is why important to apply all security nodes, uh, even for very small bugs. And for everyone, I have you. It's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you.